Today I'm featuring a fun get ready with me for us over 50 gals featuring a big old box of friend mail. Tons of products I've never tried before. Come along and join me. Welcome back, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Today's video is going to be such a fun journey because I got a huge box of friend mail from my friend Jeannie at Get This Glowing. She said, I'm going to send you a few things and by golly, I got the box. There's so much stuff in here. So I'm going to be doing a get ready with me using mostly products from this little box of friend mail and I hope you'll come along. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing and make sure you hit that notification bell and YouTube will give you a heads up when there's something new for you to watch. If you watch some of my videos in the past, you'll know that my good friend Jeannie over at Get This Glowing and I have a fun relationship. She is the consummate makeup shopper. So when we were talking on the phone the other day, she says, I'm gonna send you a box of stuff. And I thought, okay, I'll get a few fun things. I'll send her a few fun things back that I can't use in my makeup collection. And when I got the box, it was just crazy ridiculous. This is not even all of the things that were in the box. It's just so fun. I mean, there's a buxom lip. Let's see, this is a buxom lip topper, Physician's Formula eyeshadow, MAC eyeshadow, Oh gosh, this is from Becca. There's so much in here. There's foundation, there's samples, there's so much fun stuff. I thought it would be a great time just to go rifle through this box and do a fun get ready with me. So that's what I've done. I went ahead and created this look, which you'll get to see up next. Come along and join me. I'm sharing just one or two fun stories as well. So let's get into it. So I have my big box of friend mail here. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? So I have completely prepped my face. Um, it's clean. I have put on my serums and moisturizers and sunscreens and that sort of thing. But I thought I would look through and see if there was primers in here. And you know what I found? I found the Touch and Soul No Problem, <laughs> No Problem primer in a little sample. And I haven't tried this yet and I've heard really good things about this. So I'm gonna give this a whirl. And I brought over my handy dandy scissors so I can cut open any packages. So let's see how this comes out. I've cut off the top. Oh, all right, so it's squeezing out onto my hand right there. I don't know, that seems like an awful lot. Maybe I should have only used part of it. So let's go ahead and work that in. Ooh, it feels, it feels silky and, you know, silicone-y. Gosh, I wish I hadn't squeezed it out so much. I would have liked to have used more than once. It smells really pretty. A little florally, almost rosy a little bit. Nice. So I'm just going to work that in over my face. And with my primer, I always try to get it really, you know, nicely applied under my eyes because that's the area that I seem to have the most concerned about about my product moving around is underneath my eyes. All right, well, it really looks like it has quite a smoothing effect on my skin. Gosh, I still have a lot left on my hand. I wish I hadn't used all of that. In case things look really different, I went ahead and adjusted my lighting. It was a little off, so if it looks different, that's why. I went ahead and did my brows, most of my brows. I'll probably touch them up towards the end with just my LA Girl Brow. This is my go-to brow pomade right now. I'm really loving it. And I noticed that Jeannie had included a tattoo studio in my little friend mailbox. And I've actually used this and like it. I actually have it on my makeup table. And what I have found is that this tattoo studio is almost the same as the LA Girl. They're just a little bit different in the creaminess of the formula. And personally, I prefer the LA Girl. And it might just be because I've gotten used to it and I know how to work with it. I feel like they're both equally good. They're a great value. They're a drugstore price point. There's a lot of product in them. And I use one or the other every day. So FYI on the brow pomade. The, the first one is from Physicians Formula. This is their butter eyeshadow. And I actually have this palette. I, I did a little get ready with me. It's really pretty. I'm not sure I wanna use that one today because I've already used it and frankly, let's use new stuff today. Here's another eyeshadow palette. It's the Classic 
cutie for Mac. I have never heard about this, have you? So let's look inside. You can see that's some really soft pastel -y colors. That's a possibility. Has some shimmers over here, lilacs, a dark color, but it's a it's a dark shimmer. I'm not sure about that. So we'll put that aside and see if there's anything else that looks promising. Oh, you know, I saw one in here from e.l.f. I love e.l.f. eyeshadow palettes. Let's pull this one out. This is the Velvet Touch eyeshadow palette. Let's take a look here. Open this one up. I'm not opening these very glamorously today. <laughs> this is, oh, this is pretty. You can see here, it's kind of a pretty little palette, huh? What do you guys think? Which one do you want me to use? So we have the Physician's Formula, the one from MAC, the Cuties from MAC, and then this one. What do you think? I think if I use this one, I'll just go right back to my neutrals. And I don't know if I want to do that today. I think I'm going to go with this one because I think I'll end up doing a little bit different of a look than I always do. So let's go ahead and march in with this one. I'm going to start in with this palette. I'm going to go into this large color right here and just work that into the transition area and see if we can't build up a little bit of definition in the crease. So I'm just tapping my brush in, I'm going to tap off any excess, and then I'm just going to start working that on my eyelid. And that's looking awfully light. Hmm. After reflecting on the palettes, I've changed my mind. I'm going to go in with the Physician's Formula and I'll tell you why. I'm going out tonight with a girlfriend. We're doing a fun little thing that I'll tell you about later in the video. And I just think the colors in this are going to be better for what we're doing tonight. So I'm going to start in with this Physician's Formula. And let me take a look here. Oh, I've got a nice transition shade right here. So I'm going to tap my brush into that and just start building up that transition area in my eye. Tap a little bit on my brush, tap it off, and start working that in the crease. And one thing that I've really learned as a more mature woman doing my eyeshadow is um, in the beginning of applying my shadow, I don't lift my eye very much because I want that crease color to be able to be seen when my eye is just natural. And if I lift my eye up and then let it fall down, it disappears into the skin there. So I'll start out kind of defining the area with my eye just natural and then once I get that really sort of defined, then I'll lift my eye up and work that color deep into the crease there. So this is just a real soft, soft, almost um, very, it's almost a tan color and it seems to tone out a little bit pink, which I think is pretty. I'm just going to get that worked in, in the crease area there. Then I'm going to go in with my blending brush and just blend that in really well so that there's just all smooth edges everywhere around there. Next I'm going to take my flat brush and go into this shade here and I think it's got a little bit of shimmer and I remember it being just a like a little bit of a dud in my palette. We'll see if it is in this one too, if not we'll just have to work around it. So I'm just going to take that on a flat brush and just put that on the lid and it's not showing up a whole lot but we'll continue to work with it and see if we can't build up a pretty look. Now that I have that on my lid, I'm going to go back in with that same blending brush. These are brushes, I think they're from Luxie. They're really pretty. I got them in my Foxy Charm, and obviously they're due for a wash. I haven't washed my brushes yet this week. So I'm just going to blend that in with that crease color, and just we're getting just a real soft look here. So I have to tell you guys what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> Don't judge. No judging. So I, as you might know, I live in Northern California in a tiny, tiny little town right on the ocean. I'm literally looking at the ocean in my little place that I have out here. It's right on the cliffs above the ocean. It's very, very rural where I live. There's not a lot of people. There's not a lot of shopping. There's not a lot of anything. There's a whole lot of redwood trees and a whole lot of ocean. So the culture here is a little bit different. It is impacted because we're fairly near San Francisco. We're like three or four hours away from San Francisco. And a lot of people come up here from San Francisco to vacation or have little romantic weekends or sort of things. It's, it's a bit of a vacation destination. So I'm going to take my, this little small brush here. I'm going to dip it into this sort of deep purple color right there and just start working in to the outside edge of my eye to kind of develop a little bit of 
oh, depth in there. So anyway, but the town itself, although we are a vacation destination and really kind of world renowned, the town itself is fairly laid back and fairly, there's a lot of hippies here. <laughs> it's very low key. So the local culture is interesting. So tonight, a girlfriend and I are going to a barn dance. Yes, a barn dance. We haven't been before, and I, I saw the flyer for it, and I said to her, let's go to the barn dance. And she says, okay, let's go. So that's what we're doing. We're going to a barn dance. You have to wear soft to sole shoes. Fine. I guess I'm going to wear jeans. I don't know. What do you wear to a barn dance? So we're going to a barn dance, and if you're interested, put it in the comments down below, and I'll give you an update of how it went. So I'm just having that darker purple color towards the outside area of my eye, you can see. And this is just going to develop a little bit of depth and definition in that area. With this particular color, I'm getting a little bit of fallout, but not a lot. You know, I remember liking this Physician's Formula palette. I can't say that it's one of my, you know, oh my gosh, favorites. But it is a nice formula, and I find that the colors in this palette are really interesting. It's a pretty palette, and there's some great selections in here. Now I'm going to go over and just do the same thing on the other eye. Now I'm going to go back in with my crease brush and really just blend that in. I found that the older I get, the longer I need to blend my eyeshadows to make them just look really, really pretty. And when I do spend the time blending, it just makes all the difference in the world. It just, you know, takes the eyeshadow from pretty to really, really lovely. So I'm just going to blend that color, keeping it pretty much in the same area, but just really smoothing it out. In case you're wondering, what I have on my lips is Wet n Wild, one of their liquid cat suits in a pink color, and then I put some of the Milani Keep It Full over it. I just like to have a little something on my lips when I'm doing my makeup. It just keeps them moist and soft and feels more comfortable. I'll just take a little Q-tip and sort of clean underneath my eyes to clean up any fallout. Now I'm going to go into this really light color here and I'm just going to bounce my brush back between the sort of creamy color and the light color because I want to get a color that's going to cut underneath my eyebrows to sort of highlight the eyebrow area. And then I'm just going to run that along right underneath my brow just to really give it a clean look up in that area. To finish off my eyes, I'm going to go into my much-loved Everyday Eyes palette from Milani. You can see how much I've loved it. The top has even <laughs> fallen off. I think I dropped it on the tile. I use this almost every day. It's always on my makeup table. And what I love about it is, obviously, I wear this shadow a lot. I wear this as a one shadow color, you know, over the lids and then a little highlight under the brow, and we're good and go. This is the, oh, must-have naturals. This is a great palette. I think it's $10. If you don't own this palette, I can tell you it's a great workhorse and it'll last you a long time. The one that I use almost daily on my eyelids is this little champagne shimmer shadow over here. I'll just put a little bit of this on my finger and I use this with almost every look and just pat that onto the lids to give just a nice little champagne-y glow to the lid. You can see the difference there. For me, I feel like it just adds a nice little brightening effect to my eyelids. So easy to apply just on my fingers and tap it on. The one product that I almost am the most excited to try out of this whole little friend bucket, and you're gonna laugh at this, but I'm really excited about this. It's the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Foundation. If you watched my hot list video, and I'll go ahead and link it up there where I told you the top products that I'm so excited about and looking to purchase next, this was on it. The one that I had featured was in a different type of packaging, so I'm not sure if this is a different formula or what, but I'm really excited about trying this. So let's go ahead and dig into this, if I can get the package open. Let's see, oh, goody, that was fairly easy. All right, so here we are. And this is in the color, this is in Buff Beige, and I have no idea how to put this on, but what I'm gonna do is I just got some new brushes today from my boxy charms and one of them was this foundation brush which I really like. This is so soft. Oh, it, it feels like velvet on your skin. 
and I was really excited about getting a new foundation brush because I have one I love, but I wouldn't mind to have a backup when that one's dirty, which it is now. So I'm just gonna take this foundation brush and sort of rub it into the product and see what happens. And we'll start working that over the skin. I've heard so many good things about this foundation. I'm excited to get a whirl. It looks like a fairly good color match. It might be a little bit yellow for me. So what I like to do is actually work the foundation in over my skin with a foundation brush. And this is doing a really beautiful job. This brush is, I think this is a BoxyCharm brush, or at least that's what the packaging said or indicated. So I'm not sure if they're starting their own product line or what, but that's what it said. It's going on really smoothly. It looks a little, well, you know, it looks matte. I was gonna say it looks cakey, but it really doesn't. It just looks matte and it's covering well. I always like to get it out on the sides where I have some sunspots from all my fun in the sun. Once I have my foundation worked in with my foundation brush, I like to go back in with my beauty sponge and just tap it out because it seems to give it a real silky, satiny finish. But I'll have to say, this doesn't even look like it needs it, but I'm gonna do it anyway and see if it changes anything. This is really, really smooth on the skin. I'm not seeing any of the polka dot pore things that I can get quite a bit. It's looking really nice. I'm kind of curious to see how it's gonna wear. So I'll just take a little damp blending sponge and work that in. Next, I'm gonna try this under eye concealer. This is a sample packet from Too Faced. This is the Born This Way under eye concealer. Haven't used any of the Too Faced concealers, so we'll see how it works out. And this just slips out of the little package and you can see the concealers here. And I think I'm gonna use the lightest one right over here because this is gonna be going underneath my eyes. All right, so here we have the concealer in its little packaging, and I'm only gonna use just a tiny, tiny little bit. So I'm gonna get that on my finger here and just tap that in. Wow, that's bright. I have a feeling that a little goes a long way with this, and I think I'm right. So then I have a little brush that I use when I get to this step. This one right here, that once I've got it on my face, I'll just sort of smooth this in with the brush. And this looks like it's feeling like it's drying down pretty quickly. So hopefully I can get it worked in before it's completely set. Really a lot of coverage on this concealer. Then I like to go back in with a little pointed sponge and just tap out my concealer to kind of really give it a very soft, smooth finish. What do you guys think? So that's the complexion, foundation, and concealer. I really am liking that foundation. I think I'm kind of liking the concealer too. I'm not sure how drying it's going to be. I didn't set it and I usually always set my concealer. So we'll see how that works out. Next, I'm gonna go in with blush and bronzer. And there was this lovely little palette in here from Joa. I've heard a lot about Joa products, but I haven't used any. And this looks, this says be my everything. And I think they're right. It looks like it's a transitional palette from bronzer to blush to highlight, which I've been looking for an all-in-one palette. I'm not sure how this is gonna work out for me, but we'll give it a try. I'm gonna take the brush that I usually use for my bronzer and just dip it into the side that looks like the bronzer color and get a little bit of product on my brush. And then I always like to start in my hairline just because if I don't know how much product is on my brush or how the color is gonna look, it's kind of in an area that I can sort of hide in my hair if it's too much. Looks like a really pretty soft color. Bring a little bit down. Oh, isn't that pretty? Mm. Just a little bit of contouring. It's a good tone. It's Now I'm going to take my blush brush and go into the area in the center that looks like it's a blush. It almost looks sort of um, plummy a little bit. I don't know how bright it's gonna be or how pigmented it's gonna be, but we'll try. Ooh, that's pretty. I always like to keep my blush up and out <laughs> on my face. It kind of tends to give a little look of a facelift to have your blush not right in the center of your cheeks when your cheeks are a little bit lower than they used to be, which mine are, I don't know, maybe yours aren't, but for me, having it up and out seems to be very flattering. That's such a pretty color. Can you see that? 
I'm just going to do a little bit more. It has a slight shimmer to it, which I'm liking. Then I'm going to go back in with that same brush that I was using for my bronzer and just really blend it in. Now I'm going to take the brush that I, this is an e.l.f. brush. I love these little e.l.f. brushes. And I'm going to dip it into the area that looks like it's a highlighter. Just got a little bit of that on my brush. And a little bit, on, oh, that's so pretty. <gasps> oh, can you see that? It kind of has a gold shift. Really, really pretty. Oh, nice. So just a little bit on the tops of my cheeks and then up above my eyebrow. And then I always go back in again with that same bronzing brush and just really buff it out so that it blends in really well. This is so fun playing with all this new makeup. And you know what the fun part is, is that I don't know if I would have bought a lot of these on my own. So these little friend mail boxes are so fun because it gives everyone the opportunity to try things that they might never have thought of. So I'm really liking the complexion. What should we do next, you guys? Let's see. Oh, you know what I brought over? I brought over my Milani Prep Set and Glow. I love this powder. This is like <laughs> my favorite finishing powder. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on my face before I use a setting spray. So I just swirl it around and tap it off. And then I like to just really lightly apply that all around my face. It just gives a nice little glow. And I think with this foundation, which is really more on the matte side, having a little glow, at least for me, is something that I'm looking for. Now before I put on my mascara, I'm gonna go back into the palette and put a little color underneath my eyes. I don't generally wear mascara on my lower lashes anymore just because I don't wanna draw any attention to all those nooks and crannies, but I do like to put a little color towards the outside third underneath to kind of tie together the shadow on top and give a little emphasis to the outside corner of my eye. I'm gonna go in with a tiny pencil brush and into that deep purple that we put in the outside corner and just tap a little bit on and run it real gently underneath just the outside third of my eye. And I like to tie it into that color up above. Same thing on the other eye. And then I'll go back in with just a small little blending brush right here and just buff it ever so gently so that it has a little diffused look to it. Not so much of a strong edge. I'm going to go ahead and put my mascara on. I'm going to be using the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. I love this mascara. This and the Essence Mascara are my all-time favorites. So I'm going to pop on my mascara and I'll be right back. So for setting spray today, I'm going to be using, this came in the friend box too. I'm telling you, there was so much stuff in this box. It was such a treat. This is the NYX Dewy Finish Finishing Spray, and I have used some NYX Finishing Sprays, and I like them very well. I have found that as a more mature woman, a setting spray really, really helps my makeup stay on, particularly when I wear my readers, which I do a lot during the day. I don't get that little, you know, reader line that it messes with your foundation on my nose nearly as much when I use a good setting spray. So NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray today. The standouts for me for this makeup look are absolutely the CoverGirl and Olay foundation. I know that you can't see it as clearly on camera as I can in my mirror, but my skin, particularly for my age, looks almost flawless. Obviously, I have lots of nooks and crannies. I'm 62 years old. It's never going to look like it looked when I'm in my 20s, but the way my complexion is setting right now looks so great. Of course, we have to wonder if it's also part of the no pore blum primer that I use. Remember in the very beginning, that might be part of it, but the finish on this foundation is just stunning. And again, this was in the color Buff, I believe. The other product that for me was a standout is this Everything palette. I think they call it Be My Everything palette from Joa, where it goes from a bronzer to a blush to a highlighter. You know, I'll have to say, when I first saw this, it didn't really strike me as something that would be fitting for my skin or that I would get excited about. But when I put it on my face, so very lovely. And I've heard a lot about Joa products. This was exciting for me to be able to try one of their products, and I have to say, I'm really impressed. 
The other thing that I'm loving about this look is wasn't in the friend box. This came in my BoxyCharm. It's this Dose of Colors liquid lip. I think the color's flirty. I'm not sure. I'll try to link it down below. Honestly, this writing is so tiny. I don't even know if I can read it with my readers on. I think this color, the natural color, is so beautiful. It just would be so appropriate for so many looks. So I hope you had as much fun as I did. It was just a great treat for me to see all these new products and give them a try. And I'm looking forward to going through the rest of the box and I'll report back to you on the ones that I think are really a good value in the future. I hope you enjoyed this fun get ready with me. It certainly was fun looking through all these new products. And the exciting thing for me is there's so much in here that I never would have thought to buy on my own. So it's a great opportunity for me to learn about new products. So if you have a good friend that loves makeup as much as you do, why don't you guys switch friend mail? That's It's just such a fun, exciting thing to open up that box. Of course, now I have to imagine what I'm gonna put together for Jeannie and I don't even know how I'm gonna do that. It's like, you know, sending cold Newcastle. That girl has so much makeup. What am I going to do? Maybe I should send her some food items or some candles or something. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle it. Well, I hope you had as much fun as I did. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button before you go and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. It just tickles me when you take a few minutes out of your day to spend it with me. So thank you so much for stopping by. Make it a great day. Have a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.